bit about us. Um, I gave you, I guess, the, you know, inadvertently a little bit of the background of the company. Um, and what we're all about is so developers who've got good metrics who are ready to scale. We provide effectively a form of capital by advancing money to the developers against the money they're due from the App Store receipts. So basically, as quickly as you're earning it, and this can be on a daily basis, we can allow you to recycle that money back in to spend on user acquisition. Um, the, uh, what we often see, and this was a problem I had myself, is like you are generating revenues on the App Store. That for App Store, read App Store or, or Ad Networks as well. We use the two interchangeably. Um, <clears throat> you're generating revenues, but you don't have visibility of it for 30, 60, sometimes 90 days, depending on the, um, on the network. So um, the, the, the problem that I had in my business was I needed money to, for user acquisition, and then I've got a few different options. Do I try and raise equity for user acquisition, which just seems crazy? You go to a VC and say, I've got this formula, I need this much to put into it. It's what most people would normally do, but effectively with, with our model, you've got a pile of cash in the corner of the room that you can see accruing, you can see it, you can smell it, but you can't touch it. Um, and what we do is we allow you to basically use that, use that cash to fund user acquisition as opposed to either going to a publisher and giving away a crazy revenue share uh, or going to VCs and doing uh, crazy dilution. So it's a very, very capital efficient uh, way. So <clears throat> I guess my kind of mission here is to try and get, I'm writing all sorts of content at the moment, is to try and get um, companies in the app space to think about every dollar you raise, what's the risk profile and what's the return for that dollar. If we're talking about funding user acquisition where I'm funding a 90-day or 60-day cycle of uh, lifetime value, you're crazy to go back and fund that with equity capital. So um, it's a bit of a background. So <coughs> obviously, so <coughs> excuse me, paid UA is really important for most apps. There's obviously a few stories here and there where someone just um, knocks it out of the park uh, with some kind of viral hit, but for the, for the rest of us, Page UA is a really important strategy if you want some any kind of certainty around ability to scale. Um, <clears throat> this is the easy tough, the two really key things here. You've got to understand lifetime value, what it looks like. That's very easy if your app is paid. Uh, it's much more difficult if your app is, uh, is freemium. Um, <clears throat> so we, we, we basically, I'll, I'll show you in a second, we built some lifetime value modeling tools for freemium apps because we found that most developers we spoke to didn't have really much of an idea about how to calculate them. Um, I remember sitting in meetings with <coughs> companies that have raised more than $10 million in funding and seeing stand-up arguments in terms of a set of metrics and what that meant for lifetime value between the analytics guys and the CEOs and so on, etc. So the one key thing for us was that a lot of people just didn't really have much of a clue how to calculate lifetime value. So it's one of the things we, uh, we helped do. <coughs> The other thing is how long is the lifetime? How long does it take you? For every dollar you invest in UA, how long does it take you to get that dollar back? Most people think of, U of LTV just as sort of like a standalone metric. They're not thinking what it means in terms of the financing cycles of a business. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is CPI again. You know, everyone knows that's what you need to pay Facebook or Google to actually acquire a user. Obviously, you've got quality, reach, um, <clears throat> you've got the audiences and so on. Uh, you've got the um, the different ways, whether it's an install or an action you're paying for, but it's you know they're they're, they're the two kind of uh, the um, the variable factors in unit economics. You put a dollar into UA, you get more than a dollar back. Result happiness. You put a dollar into UA, you get less than a dollar back. Result misery. So um, <clears throat> just really simple, obvious facts. Unless you've figured out a way to spend profitably, just don't spend at all. Just keep figuring it out. Now, obviously there's a few kind of gray areas where, you know, you might be slightly unprofitable, but because of the organic uplift you get there. So yeah, that's, that, that's fine, that's accepted. But as a, as a strategy, if you're putting money into something that mathematically you're setting out to lose money, you, it's not a great strategy. Um, so the key things that, that we look for in companies, uh, app companies that we finance is a very clear understanding of the user acquisition cost and strategy. And that's something we actually we help with as well. We don't do it for you, but we kind of help. Um, expected revenues. And also, 
so first of all, the shape of the lifetime value curve, and then how long before you actually get the revenue. So you, know, you may have million dollar Facebook credit lines and the timing issue is just not, not an issue. Most people are maxing out their credit cards, applying for credit lines with the ad networks. Um, <clears throat> without the trading history to support it, etc. So when you actually get paid for this stuff is really, really important. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. So <clears throat> in terms of a sale that's taking place on, uh, on the App Store, whether it's on, um, on iOS or in Google Play, you're waiting up to, I think, the number 67 days uh, on Apple. That's if you if you sell at the beginning of the cycle, then you get paid. You know, the start of the third cycle. Um, with Google, it's up to about 45 days. So it's slightly better, but the the, uh, the, the, the principle is the same. With the ad networks, the earliest we've seen it is um, is 15 days after the end of the month. So net 15, and sometimes it goes to net 60, even 90 days um, before that money's actually collected. So I, I used the analogy before. Think of the think of the money you're earning every day on the App Stores, whether it's ad revenue or it's um, it's App Store earnings as an asset. Um, and when you're thinking about how you finance the business, then you might want to use your own money for it. You might want to max out your credit cards. You may want to go and raise venture money, do a publishing deal, whatever. But just all I'm urging is like think of this as an asset in the mix and and. If you've got if you've got the formula where you can grow, using that um, you know, borrowing against that as an asset is is m most likely to be your absolutely cheapest cost of capital to allow you to grow. Um, <clears throat> so this was and this is after funding close to a hundred developers and talking to probably several hundred over the last few years since we since we set up the business, um, we realised there was a really burning need to help developers calculate. Uh, lifetime value. So the install cost piece is easy. Um, the how much you're going to make was much, much harder to model. So we created um, we call a financial forecaster. So um, <clears throat> this is all online. People can people can try it up. There's no email gates. There's no nothing. It's very, very simple to use. So, um, so we had built up some really sophisticated financial modeling tools of our own. This isn't intended to be you know, a super sophisticated model. This is supposed to be almost like a traffic light signal. Does, does paid UA make sense or doesn't it? Um, and then if it does, then you can kind of drill down and you can, we can help you kind of model some more interesting scenarios out. So what we'd start doing is, you know, which uh, platform or platforms are you monetizing on? Um, Arpda, obviously super important uh, metric. Most people have this information pretty readily to hand. Install cost again. It's not like I mean we all know install costs rise the more you buy etc. This is just supposed to be a, um, like a sort of a, a headline sniff test. Marketing budget. How much are you going to start off with? Um, so this isn't how much you're going to spend necessarily over time. It's like if you if you're nudging the ship out of port, what do you have in the bank to actually do that with? Um, an estimate of uh, of virality or the organic uplift for every paid user. How many free users does that uh, bring you in, ad in aggregate? So you need to have some attribution to understand that. And then most important, the virality uh, the, is the retention curve. <clears throat> so and again, people will people will know this. Again, it changes over time. This isn't intended to be like a, a dynamic model. It's more of a static model. Um, but the, the the key thing, you know, up down, and then how long people stay in your app, and then you've got the basics of a lifetime value curve. So the first thing we do here is we're going to show you basically what that, um, what that curve looks like uh, and literally just a visual representation of it which is something that, that most people don't uh, necessarily think of. So the first of all point is like well where do I cut off at what point if I'm, if I'm making as you can see here I'm getting money out fairly quickly at what point does it flatten off to the point that I don't really care anymore. So we've done a 95 day if you look at between day 208 and day 330 on there, it's, it's almost totally flat. So let's just discount the, la the last piece of the curve and we're going to say 95% of our predicted LTV is reached after 200, 208 days. Um, so another thing you're saying then is you're, in, you're investing that dollar, or maybe it was a dollar 20, in user acquisition and you are you're getting your money back in this case the CPI break even is pretty short it's day 38 or something in this example it means I put in a dollar I get a dollar back in 38 days um, so think about that in terms of how many times can I do that in a year <clears throat> and then you then everything else beyond that is profit and then how quickly does that does that profit come in um, 
what do I need to do? Obviously, there's the operational stuff. You need to support it over time to make sure that that cohort does deliver. But you can start to model and start to understand what your curve looks like um, and also feed it back into your development process. You know, if you're trying to get people, say, let's say beyond level 25 in a game, that's the gate that's either you're going to start serving ads if people refuse to pay, or, or that you make it so difficult that people are going to start paying, whatever. So you can use this information to feed back into a development cycle, whether it's a game, it's an app, or whatever. Um, then the other thing is here is this, is this has really helped us articulate our proposition a lot better. So. Um, if you, look at the, uh, if you look at the blue line on the bottom, this is just your net cash position as a business, right? So let's say you start on day one of, a, of a, an Apple fiscal cycle here. You've got your $10,000 and you're gonna spend that $10,000 over a seven day period. That's gonna be your initial kind of marketing push. So you spend that $10,000 and then for the next 60 days, you're sitting there totally flat. So that's why it flat lines in the bottom. So you're waiting there because you haven't had any money back in from the app store or the ad network. At that stage, you get a bump, so you get a bump of cash back in. But what you're doing is this is assuming a, a constant reinvest rate of 50% of your revenue. So as soon as you get the revenue, you're investing 50% of it back into user acquisition. Now, again, we can dial it up to 100, down to 10, whatever you want to do in the more sophisticated models. But we just took, a, we just took an example of 50. And so you can see the bottom, bottom one sawtooths up gently over time. And um, you know, it's, whether it's a four-week or a five-week um, cycle in the quarter, that's why, that's why it's not just completely uh, predictable, jagged line. And then you see at the end of the year, you see the amount of cash you're sitting in the bank with having spent that much on user acquisition over time. And then the top line is if you're taking, if you're not waiting that 60 days, but you're taking the money out quicker, if you've got, a UR, if you've got an ROI positive um, formula for user acquisition, then what we're talking about is every seven days, and this is net of the financing fees and so on as well, every seven days you're taking the money and then you're recycling it back in, you're taking it, you're recycling it for that particular LTV curve. So basically, the, if you're doing that, you note a couple of things. You note the point at which you go cash flow positive, at which you don't have to have you know, your own money or someone else's money outstanding to do that. <clears throat> but then you also note the growth trajectory. Now, obviously, this assumes that all of, these, all of these metrics stay completely static over time. That's not going to happen. Hopefully, they improve over time. But that top line there is basically your, your growth or your cash position if, you are, if, you're, if you're using what we call revenue recycling as a funding method to grow. The great thing about this is <clears throat> this isn't some machine learning algorithm or AI-enabled chatbot. It's just mathematics, right? If you acquire a user here, they're going to make this much from you, but your payment cycles are like this. If you can shorten the payment cycles and use that money to reinvest, mathematically you're going to make more money. Um, so uh, that's the kind of, that's the combine, this stuff is online, people can, people can try it out. Um, and the, uh, uh, we're currently getting, I don't know, three or four hundred people a day coming there putting metrics. Now, for a lot of people actually, the it just doesn't sack up. They're, they're, you can help them stop spending money unprofitably on UA by just mathematically proving to them they're setting out to lose money. So that, that's the first thing. So we've now got all the ad networks saying, hey, can we, uh, can we start using this? Because ultimately, if I'm an ad network and I know that someone's setting out to lose money, fine, I might make my number this month, but I'm not going to see these guys back next month or the following quarter. However, if I can well, stay with a level of confidence. Actually, these metrics, these numbers stack up and they look pretty good. You, you should be spending more than the ad guy can think, well, actually, you know, I, I could grow, help grow this business from a 10K to 100K or 100K to a million dollar a month. So it just provides a lot more certainty to do that. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, the overall kind of method, if I'm trying to encapsulate the whole kind of, the whole psyche, the whole thinking behind this is just, it's, when you've got a formula that works, it's just a mechanism to do it quicker without relying on anyone else but yourself. So um, you're extracting lifetime value more quickly instead of waiting 60 days or every seven or even every day. We've seen scenarios where the growth has been so, so high that the developers want to recycle the money back in every day, which is something we've been able to do. Um, so we take a feed directly from the app store and we use that to, to adjust the amount that, um, that, that we'll invest um, or that the we'll will front or sometimes it just goes literally straight into the ad network so the spend can be immediate. So you're extracting lifetime value more quickly, you're reinvesting it back into advertising that you know is profitable, um, you're acquiring more users, 
more users, more lifetime value, more quickly. So it's just a, it's, the whole thing is about velocity of money. Um, <clears throat> so this is something that's really kind of dear to my heart because I, I, I've been in so many meetings where the developers not, you know, they're not really, uh, they've not really taken the time or whatever to understand and work with us to understand sort of what we do. And I've seen rather, you know, rather than pay a, you know, a few percent in financing margin away, someone's happily given away another 25 percent of their business to, you know, big name VC just because they they think that's what they should be doing. So the um, it, it's it's really galling to see people go out and raise venture money, dilute themselves needlessly when there's actually other forms of capital out there. So in terms of, you know, if you want to go and raise venture money, if you just it goes back to what I said to start with. Think about the risk and return profile. So if I go to a if I go to a VC and say, hey, I've got this great idea, I want to raise some money to see if there's a market for it, or I want to do some product market fit, or I want to you know hire a team or make an acquisition. That's like proper at risk stuff. Um, and you should absolutely raise venture money for doing that. And we, we, we've got some fantastic, most of our deal flow comes from venture funds who say, well, look, we, we funding the team, the IP, all the rest of it, but we don't want to fund the marketing spend because it's just a really silly way to deploy capital. <clears throat> On the other side of it, you know, from the, fan, uh, from the, um, from the founders and the, uh, the entrepreneur point of view, is once you've got lifetime values that are known and clearly understood, um, then depending on the length of that lifetime value, I mean, I could, if my lifetime value was going to be three or five years because I'm doing some SaaS product, whatever, it's, it's harder to do, right? There's a lot more risk of things that can happen in three year or two years, four years, whatever it might be. But if I'm going to someone and saying that with a 90x percent confidence interval, I put a dollar into user acquisition, I make a dollar 50 within 30 days or 45 days. When you've got something that is A, scalable and B, pretty predictable and not a lot of other things could go wrong because you're only talking about 30 or 40 or 60 or 80 days, then um, using venture money to do that is a, just a very, very inefficient way to deploy capital and ultimately it's going to be a lot more cash out of your pocket at the other end. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to talk you through a, a case study. This is, uh, this is a great company that, that we uh, were working with for um, about 15 or 16 months in total. Um, and. You know, I mean, the, the numbers are there. The numbers actually continue to, to go on a lot from there, but effectively it was um, the, the, the case study numbers, if you like, were 260K to $1.3 million a year, uh, a month, in eight months. And actually the, 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 the trajectory was longer. We did this in like August of last year. Um, <clears throat> so what Pixonic did is they had a, it was an invested business. I think they just raised one round of money and they uh, had figured out a formula for profitable user acquisition on largely Facebook. There were a few other platforms in there, but you know, think of it as mostly Facebook um, for their game 6v6 uh, PvP game called War Robots. It was originally Walking War Robots. Um, and what they did is they said, hey, we've figured out this formula. Every time we put in a dollar, we get a dollar fifty back. I don't, I don't remember the exact numbers. And they went back to the VCs and said, hey, we need to raise a round here because uh, we need to front a load of marketing spend. And the VCs um, correctly said, uh, hey, that's a really, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. You should go and talk to the guys at Pollen in London. Um, and we started working with them just a couple of weeks later. So there's no kind of expensive DD and stuff to get them started. <clears throat> and what they did, if you look at there, if you look at like an app Annie or a priori data report of what these guys have been doing, they've grown almost linearly to the point that um, uh, they got into the top 100 grossing games. And this is still a relatively kind of small team of people based in Moscow. Um, and then, of course, once you start to get onto that radar, you become, you know, you get onto lots of uh, acquirer radars as well. So they, they took a business that was you know, pretty modest in size um, and certainly not sort of profitable or a, you know, a really uh, um, <clears throat> attractive business, if you like, to one that was generating so much cash in the App Store and, and uh, it fell onto the acquisition target and they got acquired by mail.ru for 30 million bucks at the end of last year. So basically we, we were financing the growth all the way up. They didn't take any additional equity dilution. The, the investors didn't take the dilution and the management didn't take the dilution as well. So this is you know, all around it's a good thing to do. Um, it was a great story for us. We remain really good friends with them and, but ultimately when you, when you get off the, off the ramp at the other end and you sell your business to a big public company then your, your requirement um, wanes. So the thing that we kind of, 
that, that we're helping doing is people, and it can be really early. We uh, we had a we put a, a case study out for a dating app, a subscription dating app, um, a couple of weeks ago that started off at literally just a uh, couple of thousand. It was a UK company, a couple of thousand pounds a week, um, and they are doing now. You know, hundreds of thousands a month in revenue. Uh, so I think it was 1,400% in a little under two years. Again, subscription model, just um, kept adding users, doing UA over time. Um, really understood the metrics, and it was a it was a, a great journey. And again, no additional dilution. So um, I'm obviously around. I've just got here, but I'm around uh, a little bit. Um, this is certainly all tomorrow, pro probably not so much this evening, but around tomorrow. So if that kind of resonates with anyone um, and you want to have a chat about it, then I'm around. If not, anyone can go to the calculator at any time. We're going to be releasing some different calculators as well. We're about to do one for um, subscription apps as well. So uh, if you've got that kind of recurring revenue, some of the parameters are different to the normal freemium acquisition. So that's the next one. And um, you know, any kind of feedback or um, ideas in that product roadmap for us would be really useful. Um, so, and then <clears throat> the other thing is we do a lot of uh, a lot of content. Um, we're trying to sort of evangelise about you know how we help and where we help. Lifetime value modelling is clearly a big part of it, um, and then capital efficiency is when when to raise money and the right type of money to raise for the right type of purpose is something that's pretty close to uh, to my heart. So. Um, Ask if if there's any questions, if we can be helpful at all, that'd be um, that'd be great. 